Welcome back to the basement headquarters of the 1010 Club. Today I wanted to talk about something that I think we all have to deal with, which is not having a lot of money to spend on a watch, but wanting a really nice looking watch. Well, there is one thing you can do today to automatically make your watch look like it's worth two, three times what you paid for it, and it's hardly gonna cost you anything. Now, before we get into the details, I'm gonna show you in a visual example. Observe and observe. Look at how different this feels than the original basement headquarters. I mean, we are literally only six feet away from the original desk, but see how an environment can completely change the feel of something? I mean, we have plant life now, it's fake. Rich mahogany, that is just stained plywood. But my point is, I'm still the same, but my surroundings kind of elevate this whole thing. If you haven't picked up what I'm talking about yet, I'm alluding to watch bands and bracelets. For just a little bit of money, you can automatically elevate your watch into the next stratosphere. We've seen it before, and I'll mention some famous examples, but I want to show you three specific examples from my own collection that completely elevate my watches and make it look like I spent way more money on them than I did. So two of the three examples today will be Seiko's, and I think it's safe to say they are one of the worst offenders when it comes to factory bracelets and straps. I mean, this rubber strap that comes with the SKX, number one, is just uncomfortable. You can see it biting into my wrist, even though it's so loose on my wrist. Also, I mean, look how wide it is before it tapers down. It just makes this watch, it, un, it's unflattering, point blank. I talked about some famous examples in the intro, I mean, when Hodenki put that article out about the Seiko 5, when you just replace it with a brown leather strap, it started a revolution. This is what I'm talking about. Just switch out the strap. This watch is going to look amazing. If you have 60 bucks, you can do it today. I'll show you. Just look at how good the SKX looks when you put it on a bracelet. This is the Super O Boyer from Strap Code. So the Oyster style bracelet. I know you mostly see SKXs on Jubilees, but just look at how good this watch looks with the bracelet automatically upgraded. And we all know how many upgrades you can do on an SKX. The bezel, the bezel insert, hands, uh, replace the Hardlex crystal, domed, whatever. It doesn't matter though. For me, if I had to choose one upgrade and one upgrade only, one modification, it absolutely would have to be the bracelet. It looks amazing and I don't feel the need to do anything else to this watch. Will I? Mm, maybe. But do I have to? No. All right, we're going to go back in time real quick to when I first tried on the Seiko Recraft, the SNKM97. I had a kind of a laundry list of complaints. You can see that video if you want to see them all, but I did think I liked it overall, even with this stainless steel bracelet. But when I switched it out, well, let's use video magic to show you what it looked like. Look at the upgrade factor that this alligator bracelet gives to the Seiko Recraft. Oh my God. I mean, brown and green is going to be a winner no matter what, but the look was just automatically elevated. This watch pops so much more. It even gives it more of a retro style. And I know I have complained about the boring flat crystal, but this strap can make me not moan and groan about that crystal for just a little bit longer. But this strap, which by the way, I got for $30 used on eBay, although it came in brand new condition, $30 makes this $118 watch automatically look like it costs two, three, even four times that amount. All right, now let's look at my biggest watch that I own, the Citizen Bryson, or we can call it the Breitling Navi Timer Jr. I've had this on this bracelet the entire time I've owned this watch, so almost 10 years. You can see all those scratches and scuffs on it. What is this, anyways? Uh, beads of rice, had a baby with a jubilee. It looks nice. It goes with the watch, it's solid end links. It feels good, solid bracelet, but when you switch it out, it's undeniable. All right, so, <laughs> hey, eagle eyes amongst you might realize that this lug width is mismatched with this totally beat up bracelet. I mean, look at how beat up this thing is. Well, to me, it doesn't even matter. This makes this watch look so much cooler and it doesn't even fit yet. I cannot believe I went through 
10 years of my watch collecting life without switching out the bracelet on this watch. This is the way I'm gonna wear this watch from now on. In fact, I thought I had retired this watch. I didn't really like the way it looked anymore. I thought it was too flashy. The bracelet just didn't do it for me. But when I get myself a 22 millimeter NATO strap for this watch, it's gonna have a brand new life. And I think it also classes it up. It makes it look more like a luxury watch, more like a watch that has more thought put into it instead of just a, hey, look at this big shiny thing. Is this just a reminder that switching up straps could make your watch an entirely different watch? Well, if that's all this is, then you're welcome for the reminder because you might have more watches in your collection than you realize if you just switch out some straps. All right, well, let's end it here. Just look at how elevated these watches are on these straps. Now, did I leave this half and half to clearly exemplify the difference or have I just been struggling so much to get this stupid part of the bracelet off? I'll never tell. But look, would you rather want this watch or this watch? A $60 difference in that SKX. It's amazing. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And do please in the comments let me know if there's anything special you would like to see.